in this presence right now is your opportunity to use your faith. The Lord is here. And on our end of the faith spectrum, we're not asking to get anything. We want to thank him for blessing. You've already been healed. You've already been delivered. Every sin that you have has already been forgiven. You are righteous. You are a child of God. You have the mind of Christ. And you are the temple of the living God. Not only does the Holy Spirit dwell within you, but the Spirit of Christ. And the Spirit of God. I separate the two because there is the, the, the Holy Ghost and then there is the Spirit, the Spirit of God, which is God is light. And God is love. You can't be saved without that. And faith works with, faith works by love. There's so many other things I can go through in that regard. But I want to, would you stand with me and read one more portion of scripture? Congregation, please rise. For the reading of God's word. Mark, I mean Matthew, chapter 28. Verse 18 and 19, a familiar scripture. We there say amen. amen. Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. I said it wrong, correctly. 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe and to do. I'm sorry. To observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I empty myself with me that I might preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Yes. Lord. So we stand like Jesus said. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Well, the kingdom of God is here now. Jesus has done his work. We are standing in the midst of your kingdom. As we pray, let it come, let it be manifested just like it is in heaven. That's where your will is. Glorify yourself. So I empty myself of me and ask you to fill me and all of us around us with, with your Holy Spirit afresh, the consuming fire, the Holy Ghost and the fire. We thank you now, Father, for changing minds, transforming us. Giving us a new mind, a new way of thinking, a new way of worshiping, a new understanding. Every place that we were weak, let it be strong. Every place that we lack, let it be overflowing with overflow. Overflow of your blessing. Let your reality of your presence be real to us. That we serve you not only by word, but by the experience that as we walk in your word, it begins to come to pass. That we can remember that we will be a God-blessed, miracle-working, changing people. That our nation might change. We pray that every church will catch the fire. Every city will catch the fire. This nation will catch on fire. And we'll be who you have called us to be. Have your will, have your way, Father. Show us things we've never seen before. Not just in church worship, but also in our daily lives. Come and, and explode inside of our life. Come and give us an encounter now. Let us and the how to and trust in you. Jesus. We don't do it, you do it. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, you said you will do the work. The Father gives the glory and we'll give the joy. You, because you answered our prayer. I said thank you, Lord. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Jesus. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Amen. 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 I don't need to say anything about Satan. Because he don't get nothing here anyway. Yeah. Everybody in here can cast him out. Yeah. If you understand what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Amen. So if you feel the system around, just say get out. Go to Jesus' feet and look at my feet. 
The title of this message is, is somewhat. It's, I'm going to speak on the glory and dominion of Jesus Christ, our Lord. When I, when I, when I began to, uh, to write this, as I was trying to come with the title, this thought came to me, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. It's his kingdom, it's his power, the Holy Ghost. It is his glory and the prayer. It's it. And he has given it to us. Amen. My basic purpose in communicating these things to you, please listen to me, is that Jesus Christ had dominion and power and authority. He laid it down. He took it back up again. And then he made a way in his purpose of laying it down to bring us into the kingdom and the blessing of God and to reconcile us to where we were only on a higher level. We have left from Adam's level to Jesus' level. The Bible says that he was made a little lower than the angels. That's not true. The word is not correct. It's he was made a little bit lower than Elohim, which is... Uh, Elohim is God Almighty, the one who said, let there be. In the beginning was. That's Elohim. That's God. After that point in scripture, they called him Jehovah Elohim. And then the next time it was Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sintanu, Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. But his real name uh, in the beginning is Elohim. That's the uh, Hebrew name for God. It, in fact, they didn't even allow anybody to say that name. That's why they changed it. They say Yahweh. They refused to say God's name because they had that much respect and honor. They feared God. And I think we should, I think everybody in church should get a holy, righteous dose of the fear of God. I mean the fear of God. Uh, not just respect as a father and, and give, giving him regard as an awesome God and you know that he loves us, but you ought to know this in fear. Why do you think everybody gets in the presence of angels for that day? They say, fear not. Because they were in the presence of God. They came out with the glory of God. And they, you, we fall dead in their presence. It's just that hope. And so when God brought us into that, we are now under Jesus Christ's dominion. When you're under his dominion, that means that you and I, he is our Lord. Most of us think of him as Savior. We don't really think of him and submit to him as Lord. That's why we don't get blessed as we should. We, I mean, it was quite blessed. But you, if you are blessed now, you don't follow him, you need to be blessed more. You'll be blessed more when you follow him. And so God gave us and put us under his dominion. Now we have dominion and we rule and reign in our individual worlds, in our individual environments. And the Satan cannot, most you understand this, that Satan can't mess you, mess with you unless you listen to him unless you obey him and you walk with him. And you're, and we, what we do is step out of in Christ and we go back into our fleshly world. So I'm coming to tell you that we line up with Jesus as he brought himself back and got back the glory. He made a place for us to come into the glory and now we have dominion. Long as you follow him. This is, this is not going to be. This is now in your life. And you and I can be blessings to whoever we want to be. Amen. And all whoever he leads you to. Are you with me? Someone will release this. Because he said, go over with me to Luke chapter 9. I want to show you. Luke chapter 9 verse uh, 1 and 2. Yeah, that's amen. Amen. Everybody still with yourself on that? Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now this power and authority that he has given to those disciples, he never stopped giving. It, 
and he told them that whoever you preach and teach to, teach them what I taught you. This is what he taught them. The whole purpose. He didn't give them a classroom experience. He says, come and go with me. Come go with me to the city. Come watch what I do. And as you go, and I think I'm going to send you out, and I want you to do this. Cast out, he says, uh, 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 oh, I give you power over, over all devils. Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. Every one of us as believers have that opportunity. Nobody ever told you that. Nobody ever told you your daddy was rich. Nobody ever told you you were free. Nobody ever told you that he loves you. Yes. How many people have fathers and mothers and, and, and they never said they loved them, but what they did is try to show them they loved them, but they never heard it. And there are old people in their seven And then a lot of us won't even accept it. But I don't want to go there. I'm not teaching on that. I want to give you some definitions that, that are mine uh, for these particular items. The kingdom of God. Because I'm going I'm, I'm to teach you about the kingdom of God and what God has given. So when you expect the kingdom of God, the first thing you should expect is the presence of God in your life. When you get the kingdom, that's where God dwells. We're talking about the heaven. Everything that's going on in heaven should be going on in your life right now. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus says, I need you to pray this. And then when he came down to it, after he died, he made a way for us to walk in. Now all these things come by faith. The presence of God. Success. Healing. Restoration. Protection. Deliverance. Breakthrough. I like to say financial breakthrough. Wealth. Security. Peace in the midst of a storm. Wholeness. Health. Eternal life. And eternal life means to know the Father. God Almighty. The only true and living God. And Jesus Christ whom he has sent. The next word I want to give you clarity on. Salvation means to be, means to make free. Now these are all the, the Hebrew and the Greek translations of that particular word. To make free, safe, liberty, which means free, prosperity, rescue, restoration, defender, or, and, or, defense. So when you've been saved, you have been delivered. You've been made free. You have prosperity. You've been restored. And you have a defender and you got a defense. That's when you say salvation. That's what you got. Y'all walk with me so far? Amen. Don't you feel blessed? Amen. Just hold on, wait a minute. I'm just releasing what it is coming. So I want to talk about Jesus. In this great commission, he told us, he says, teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. He says now, what I taught them was that all I need you to do is go and preach the gospel of the kingdom. And I, I want to clarify, that's what I'm doing today, clarify what the gospel of the kingdom is. Uh, and here, so when the word goes out about the kingdom, that we really share it properly, the power of God is supposed to automatically happen. Amen. And I'm believing that those of you who need to be healed, that's one of the first things that you need to understand when the gospel goes forth in this environment, when the Spirit of God is strong in the house especially, that you ought to be healed today. Amen. I don't care what it is. I don't care how many times you've been in the line. I don't care how many times you prayed. You prayed this morning and nothing happened. We didn't expect something to happen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son.
Him. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Before we started this journey, God said, I love Him. And He sent His love toward us. Everybody here that God's love sent to you is yours. You just got to take it. Then He says, He sent His Son, which opened the door. Jesus says, I am the door. I am the shepherd and I am the door. Everybody coming to me shall come in and find pastures and go in and out. I never understood what that in and out means, but I do know this. We can find pastures to eat in and protect us. I believe that the Word of God has pastures in it. And when we enter into a particular place or in a particular revelation or understanding of God, it is our inheritance. And we can go into that and partake of it. And once God opens the door and shows you something, you got it. It's always yours. It's not going to be taken away. The doors are not going to be closed. He says, I open doors and nobody can close. He says, I can close the door and nobody can open. He can close the door on your whole life today. What you used to be. You know that you haven't been changed like you need to be changed. Today, we want to close that door on the old life. We want to go into the open door of the new life. All that you used to be, all that you can't handle, all that you're ashamed of, all that you just let it close. Close it, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And open up the doorway to heaven. Open up the doorway to my destiny. Did I just stop climbing up and falling down? Have you, does anybody in here ever feel like that in your life, you look at it and, and, and there's a hole you keep falling in? It's the same hole. <laughs> Climb yourself out, you get up on the edge, you look over, and then you do something stupid and go right back down in the hole. Nobody pushing you over there now. It ain't the job. No. You just go back in the hole. You say, what the fuck? You know what I mean? You say, why did you do that? <laughs> or you, the situation brings you, uh, you come to a situation where uh, you can't find any other answer, so you, you go back to doing the same thing. I know I'm going back into the same hole. Uh -huh. Financially, uh -huh. socially, with the people you're dealing with, yep. with your attitude, and, and there's something about you that just keeps, I'm weak, and I need the answer. Oh, okay. And then when God gives you an answer, a few times, you still go back in. Because uh -huh. I don't want to do what he said. I don't want to submit. But when you come under his domain, and you make him Lord, and you receive his dominion in your life, you start getting blessed, and then he starts blessed, using you as an instrument of his kingdom. Yes. Am I ahead of anybody? Amen. You understand what I'm talking about? Amen. That's what God is taking us. He wants to use you. And, and, and you're not going to know it all. You just need to know what you need to do this moment. Amen. And when you do this at this moment, you go, oh, yeah. So that's what that means. That's, that's what he says love the end. Lord knows I can't stand it. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. And so the Great Commission it's the release of God's release of God power. I can pray and I expect to see that happen to you. If you can raise, raise up in your faith. And, and let me tell you something about how awesome God is. Because we get faith in this shit, don't you? I want you to understand this clearly. That God will heal you without you asking. Amen. Uh -huh. He'll change you just by sitting in here. Yes, you can pray for somebody a thousand miles away. Amen. That's right. And tell them right here in our church. People are getting healed. Amen. And we pray for your problem. Yes. So check yourself right now because I believe you healed. Yes, right. I believe your life just changed. Check yourself. Amen. That's right. I think that, that, that big toe that you have hurting all the time. <laughs> check that big toe. Because <laughs> I just got to pray for you in church. And church is awesome today. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. That's yes, it was. God is just that power. Yes. Yes. He don't need you to be involved. Yeah. If you just shut up, yeah. you just be there. He'll do it like he wants to do it. I'm asking for some strange blessings. I'm, like, I'm asking for some supernatural change stuff. Because you know, you and I are supernatural because of all things that become new. I ain't what I used to be, and you ain't either. I want to talk about Jesus. I, we, I introduced this on, in Bible study, but we're going to talk about it. And the Bible tells us that, that Jesus, let me get to my notes. It says, in the beginning was the Word. St. John chapter 1, verse 13. I'm not going to wait on you, so you just got to flow with me. But just take notes. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. 
all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So Jesus Christ was a part of Godhead. He was uh, a part of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In, and he was in the beginning with God. And he was the one, he was the one when God said, let us make man. When he said, when he spoke the word, he said, let there be light. When he began to say, let there be, Jesus Christ was the let there be. He was the word that after the did whatever. God the Father was where everything came from. Everything was inside of him. But when God began to speak what was in his heart, Jesus came out. That's why when he came to earth, he was nothing but God's heart. He loved everybody. He had everything inside of him. We were in God's heart. So what happened was, when he spoke it, Jesus came forth, and he created everything. Everything was created by him and for him. Y'all want to listen? This is, this is our Lord who creates everything. Then Jesus, when he decided to come to the earth, he laid down Submitted to God but not sin. And he fulfilled the old covenant by walking as a man, showing us how it should be done. And when he did that, he walked among the earth. He never cursed anybody. His purpose was to reveal the Father and destroy the works of the devil. He destroyed Satan's work as a man, keeping the old covenant. Now you know how weak the old covenant was. <laughs> and Jesus had to have some power. So God and his baptism, the Holy Spirit came on him and rested on him. Yes. And in his obedience, the Holy Spirit never left him. Amen. And so when he walked the earth, he did what the God, what God did. He did what the Father did. He never cursed anybody with the storm, even though he had a storm. He didn't say, I want you to go over there to Jerusalem and I want you to hit, hit Jerusalem and destroy the city because they've been disobedient to me. He didn't say that. God don't need a song. No. God does not need sickness. He's telling anybody to be sick. They brought the whole city to him. And he showed them that God loves everybody. Amen. Brought sinners to him. When the law said, stone them, curse them, who is she touching you? Why you got a prostitute touch you? Why do you, why do you let, and you're supposed to be a man of God, why do you allow a leper to touch you and make you unclean? Because I'm God. Yes, I forgive their sins. Yes. The problem was, is that a leper, if they touched you, you caught the lepers. But when they touched Jesus, he made them righteous. But made himself 
of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Yes. And being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself, mm -hmm. and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore well, God has highly exalted him, and given him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. God blessed him and made him the high priest. He, 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 he blessed him when he laid all these things down. But then I want to show you in uh, his divine uh, recovery. Oh, uh, goodness, I gave my Bible. I have one scripture I don't even have. Go with me to Ephesians. Let's read this. Ephesians chapter 1. Chapter 1 and Chapter 1 in Ephesians verse 20 through 23. Which he wrought in Jesus, this is what God did in Christ. Which he walked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And to put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So what God did, when at Jesus' death, he raised him up from the dead, and when he raised him from the dead, he restored him back to all power, high above all principalities and powers and dominions and might, that every knee shall praise him. And he, and he made him the head over the church, which we are a part of his body. And he put everything under us. That's why when I was telling you that when we come in, in the dominion of Jesus Christ, in the finished work of what God has done through him, that he made us a part of his body. So when we line up in his body, his dominion comes down, and everything has to obey us because we're a part of the body. Yeah. Yeah. So the dominions of darkness, principalities, powers, dominion, might, spiritual wings in high places, and the rules of darkness of this world can't tell you what to do. That's they have no power over you. Right. Sickness is a part of Satan. That's not God. Oh, and we have learned in the church because of our experiences that since he didn't heal my mama, he didn't heal me when I thought he should have, then maybe God don't heal everybody. Yes. That's not true. Amen. It's not God's problem. The people who are in those situations, we change our doctrine to make it fit our experience. Right. But God's word says that God Y'all gonna have my answer. Everybody don't get saved, but it's God's will. Uh -huh. It's God's will for you to be healed. Yes. Now, if you don't get it, that means that you didn't seek for it too hard. I don't know why you did, why you don't get it, or why mama didn't get it, or why I didn't get it last time I prayed. But I, it was, it's not God, it's me. Yes. And I seek you until the day I die. But I think what happens is when we get this sickness and situation, God is saying, I need you to turn. Or your body is saying, I need you to turn. And turn to our God, live the rest of your days in the kingdom of God, and you're going to be blessed and delivered and healed. Yes. Amen. But, we, but, but, but what we want to do is, as we hear people say, we need to be balanced. And, and, and when we hear people say balanced, they say, you, you know, you, you, you too, you so heavenly minded that you are no earthly good. That's right. You ever heard anybody say that in, in church? Because you ain't no earthly good. If you are so heavenly minded, you should be doing what's going on in hell. But if you ain't acting like everybody in the church, and you're not sitting up when they should be clapping and standing up and praising God, and you're not seeking God like everybody else, or when you are seeking God and everybody else is doing something different, they're having a tailgate parties at the game. Everybody getting drunk. Church folks and everybody. In fact, this day truck they have me. You gotta be balanced. Balance as we think is somewhere between heaven and hell. The way you are. That's right. I don't want to be balanced. I want to be 
be in the kingdom. I want to be all the way in. I want all he got. And you don't have no dominion in heaven. He gives you dominion and blessings here. He gives you healing here. There's no limits. It's for now. He prospers you here. That's right. It's now. Amen. Are you walking with me? Amen. And so he brought Jesus through this process that Jesus can bring us into heaven through the front door Amen. and we bless. Amen. He laid down his divinity. He took it off. He walked among us. He died for us. Opened the door. Came back to his place. Sat down and said it's finished. And y'all come on in. Everybody who believes come on in. If you don't believe stay where you at. And so we as Christians have got to be holy. Holiness is obeying the Holy Spirit. That's all holiness is. Do what God says. Do it his way. And when you're weak and you fall short, he'll do it for you. That's right. That's why we have this fast. Begin to listen to him. Learn how to listen to him. He's taking you into the house. You're already there. Let me show you. Now that's the first part of the kingdom. What Jesus did. The second part is what he did for us. And everybody in here is begin to born again. On your way to heaven. Ain't never seen them. Most of you have never seen them. Well, you would kill me if I told you where to go. <laughs> I'm about to say, you lying. Oh, no, Pastor Batch, I know I'm going there. Never been there, never seen it. And probably ain't never read Revelation more than once or twice. That's right. Because you know that you know it is the Spirit of God that tells you that you are a child of God. Yes. And you know that. I know that I know I know. I was back in the 80s, you see everybody say that. I know that 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 I know. I'm saying. Yes. Do you remember me saying that back in the 80s? The church has taught us some things that really is nothing. Amen. Let's go over to, to, to this. We, he calls us, I talked about this. He, he calls us to be joint heirs with Christ. And has given us the authority and the power if we believe in Christ. Not about Christ, but to believe in him. Because many of us grew up in the church and we know about him. What the son through all my life. And you know, most of you didn't know the law. You used to read the, I was a Sunday school teacher. Didn't know what I was doing. We didn't even read the scripture. We just read the commentary and then got through with that and just did our thing. I'm in junior high school being a Sunday school teacher. What am I teaching? I didn't know what the heck I was teaching. I just believed. But God was with me. Are you with me? He showed up later. Oh, did he show up? And then, then he said, uh, now we have been made to enter the kingdom of God. So he calls us to reign. That's one thing. We reign by one man, Jesus Christ. He made us kings and priests. Washed us from our sins in his own blood. This is the gospel of the kingdom. Everybody who believes get these things. We've been bat baptized into Jesus' death and raised up by the glory of God, walking in the newness of life. When you, that's, this, that was Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through, three through 6. God took us by the Holy Spirit and baptized us into his death, not into war, and raised us up by the glory of God. He raised Jesus out of, the, out of death by the glory of God. When he baptized us into his death, he raised us Whatever. 
everything comes to us by belief. If you don't know it, how are you going to believe it? You can't even write a check unless you know what's in the bank account. It's going to bounce. How many, how many of your prayer checks bounced? Let's go back. Look at the deposit. I'm telling you the deposit. You're a new creature. All the heavenly blessings. If he said it, he meant it. You got all the blessings in heavenly places. You just got to believe it and let him do the work. Don't pray and tell God how to do it. Yes. Don't pray and tell God, let me tell you, let me say you're disappointed. <laughs> the reason I tell you don't do it is I do it. I have done it. I've told him how to do it, how I want it to do it. But then that made me go. And I still do it. I just can't help him. I want to help him out. I've been helping you. I think I've been helping you out. I know you have. You've been helping me. Through this fast, y'all trying to help him too. That's right. One of the 40 days ago, real quick. And when we just surrender to him and say, God, let your will be. Because I know what your will is. Your will is I'm here. Your will is I'm blessed. Your will is that my family prosper. So I ask my friends. I prayed for my children a long time ago. Uh -huh. 35 years ago. Amen. And God brought it to pass. Yes. It's good when you can look back and see what the Lord has done. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now going through all that, there was some battles, there was some difficulty, there was some blessings. But I look back and see what the Lord has done. He answered my prayer. Yes. He gave me my heart's desire. And now we're in a new arena. We're in a new time, a new era in my family life. Right, and other part of me is you. We're, we're entering into a new arena and we gotta uh, 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 open up our faith and open up our belief and look at what he said and what he has made us. It's all supernatural. It's all heavenly. If you accept what he said about you, he changed you already. It's a moment and a twinkling of an eye. And all of us already got it. So he made us new creatures and old things have passed away. We got heavenly blessings that are ours. How many of you say this mine? Say it's mine. Wow. It's my heavenly blessings. Wow. And don't project they had, and it was going to take $30 million. I said, that's bad. Mm -hmm. That's for God. I, I, I believe sometimes when I hear something spoken, that is God speaking to me. Mm -hmm. and, and just because he said that, I've never asked for $30 million. I'm going to ask for him. Hey, you better go on. Amen. All right. I changed it. Okay, God, since you're going to give me $30 million. Yes. They gave me up for so job project or a restaurant or something like that. But I'm talking about changing people's lives. Amen. A new way to pray. She says, let us come boldly. 
to the throne of grace. Yeah. To obtain mercy. Yeah. To find grace to help in this time of need. Yeah. That's why when I do the invocation, that's why I pray that prayer. Because yes, I want us to have the mindset that we come up the throne. As I was worshiping, I, I saw myself before the throne of God laying out prostrate. Yeah. And, 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 and that while, while everybody was praising and, 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 and praising and dancing and lifting your hands and singing along with the worship, I saw myself laid down and prostrate before God. That your praise and worship will continue. That's why I, 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 see, I frequently see myself when, when the first spirit is moving high, I see myself laid down. That's why I believe it. I come and I lay out before God in the throne. Amen. And I'm praying, I say, Lord, don't let it stop. Don't let it stop. I won't move. Amen. Don't let it stop. Don't let it stop. Let us continue to worship you and find joy and pleasure in worshiping God. How many of you enjoy worshiping God? Especially if you get praise and good worship and the heart of God and you sense the presence of God, you're sweet. But you can take this out of here and take it in the car. That's right. Take it home with you. In fact, take it home with you and then bring it back. Okay? You're not getting a book from the library. This is yours. You don't have to bring it back, but every time you go, you can take it with you. Take the worship. And now, and now he's giving us the kingdom. That's right. Now he says, now, go tell them. Yes. Be a witness and I will manifest the kingdom. So right now, the kingdom is yours. Amen. Are y'all ready for this? Amen. We're going to ask God's blessing. Amen. Father, we preach the kingdom as much as we can. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your glory. Thank you for laying it down. Thank you for dying for us, giving us that precious blood. You made a way to cleanse our sins. You justified us and made us righteous. We are now the children of God. You're brand new. We are more heavenly minded than we were before. Thank you for all the stuff that you've done. You've only spoken part. You are a supernatural God. And change my spirit. As Ezekiel, as you said in Ezekiel, I think it was Ezekiel 36, you said that I will cleanse them. We are sanctified by the blood. But we are cleansed by the word. We are sanctified, set apart for your task in a heavenly and God holy way by your blood. Thank you, Jesus. But we also are cleansed by the word. You said you give us a new heart, not a heart of stone, but a heart of flesh. And we will have the compassion and the love of Jesus for one another and for you. Then you said you give us a new spirit. You made us born again. You made us. That is the gospel of the kingdom. And your kingdom and your blessings are in our hands if we will only believe. So we, we say we believe you now, Father. And I ask you to have your will and have your way. Every heart is here. Every individual is here. I thank you for healing and moving upon your heart and your mind right now. This is the kingdom. So I command every demonic spirit, every, every oppression, every bondage. You do not give us the spirit of bondage. Nor did you give us the spirit of fear but the spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. And I ask you to fill, to overflow. We cast out Satan under the feet of Jesus, under our feet. And everything is like that. And we release the blessings of God, spiritual blessings in heavenly places, some of which we name, there are more. Let it fill our hearts. Let it be in our forefront of our mind, put it in our hearts. We will live by you. Let it be in our cognitive, cognitive understanding. Our cognitive abilities will be heavenly. We walk in the heavens. We walk pleasing to you. You said, if we cast out devils, heal the sick, cleanse levels, raise the dead. The kingdom has been preached. The kingdom of God is at hand. In fact, we repent. We change our mind about what we used to be and what we used to do. And we receive your blessing. We receive the kingdom because he's no longer there. The kingdom has come. This day, 
If you harden not your heart, as in the provocation, this day, we enter into your rest, Father. We choose to enter into your rest, enter into your kingdom, your finished work. We choose to enter into all those things. Next to the word of the day that we heard, by faith, we receive it now. Faith is now, not tomorrow. Faith is now. The power of God is now. And we ask your Holy Ghost to do your work. Heal right now. We don't do it ourselves. You heal. I need everybody to reach over and touch somebody. The reason I'm saying, touch them on the door, don't go on in. Do it like a healing. Healing. He says, they who lay hands on the sick shall recover. Everybody, be there, touch somebody. So, Father, we lay our hands on one another. We cast out them. Right now, because you how you sit. We're not praying, we do it. You just said, pray for them, just lay your hands on them. The God that we just received, and it's in the air, He delivered, set free. Yes. The kingdom is here now. Yes. Everything we receive. Thank you, Lord. You're the healing. Healing is already in us. Yes. Such as we have. Thank you, Lord. Such as we have been given and just yes. that flow among all of us. We're no stronger than the weakest link. We're no stronger than the weakest one of us. But Lord Jesus, be glorified. Let this be according to the riches of God's glory and according to the riches of God's grace. To God the Father be the glory. In the name of Jesus. So let it be. Thy kingdom come. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah.